People just won't believe that you got the photo that I'm about to show you how to take out of a phone. You're going to need a few things to do this with the iPhone. Any iPhone can do this after about the iPhone 11 Pro and onwards. You're going to need a tripod and you're going to need a phone holder. I'm using the Freehill tripod and I'm using a Ulanzi MagSafe phone holder. I think this here is a sweet combination. You're going to need a couple of other things. One, you're going to need an absolutely clear sky. Talk about what's going on here. It's 28 outside, it's clear skies. And that's it. Now we take a photo. Now the reason that we're using a tripod here, if I look into the camera and I've got that little yellow icon there, that's your night mode on the iPhone. When I'm using it handheld, it's only going to give me 10 seconds. But once I put it onto a tripod, give it a second, there's 30 seconds. And that time makes the world of difference when we're taking this sort of photo. So I'm just going to raise that up a little bit just so that the horizon's a little bit lower. That's it. I'll wait for it to go 30 seconds again. There it is. I'll take a photo. We'll see what this one turns out in just a second. Hey, if you're into photography with your phone, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I do two videos each and every week all about this sort of thing. And what we're doing tonight is the most basic of astrophotography with your iPhone. And trust me, we're at the beginning of the season. I've got some very cool things to show you this year, guys. If you have subscribed, you're a bloody legend. Let's go and check out this photo. All right, that's pretty damn good. Now, I think you're gonna be pretty impressed by the fact that this phone can just do this by doing what I've just shown you how to do. There's a few things that we can make to do this better, and we'll go through those in just a second. You can see even on this photo, there's even a plane that's gone through the sky there at one point. The light from the video camera here has lit up the feed of the, it lit up the foreground, I should say, of the grass and the, the post, and you'll see what else is here in a minute. I'll throw some more light on it and we'll get a better photo. As I look at this photo, I go, what can make this better? Because it's all well and good to get some photos of the stars, and you've got to admit, that's a pretty damn good photo. But we can make it better. And it's easy to get into the trap of going, I capture some stars, that's awesome, I'm an astrophotographer, and rest on your laurels there and not make it any better. And if you're not sure what I mean there, over on the Facebook group, the Bloody Legends Facebook group, we've got a really, really good photography group for phones over there. Um, the guys over there, once they do their first photo, you can see they're just so excited about putting a photo up of stars that they've captured with their phone. But we can get it so much better. In this photo here, what I look at is, the foreground element of those two little um, like triangular looking things, I know what they are, they're a loading ramp for stock for cattle over there. And I think if we bring the camera lower and get those things into the sky a little bit more and maybe put some light around the right hand side of the photo, that's going to make the photo look a lot better. Um, the light that's behind those triangles, those stockyards, is actually a town, if you can believe it. That glow that's on the horizon there is a town, and it's about 60 kilometres away. That's a chuka away, way out in the distance there. So the light that we're picking up on the horizon there is actually a town. So we get this a little bit lower, and we're going to try the photo again. We might even try Pro Raw, because it's kind of elevating that, and we'll talk about that in a second. Let's get another photo taken. The process of doing this is exactly the same. So it's a matter now of just dropping this sucker down. It's probably going to be low enough to be perfectly honest. The setup in here is really no different to what we had before, with the exception of it's a little bit lower and we're going to use Pro Raw. Up the top corner there, you've got Pro Raw and it was taken out. Now it's enabled. I'm just going to move this light because this light's interfering way too much with that. And we'll take this photo again. It'll sit there and take another 30 second photo. Why I turn Pro Raw on, Pro Raw is going to give us more options in editing. The photo that you take with astrophotography is always going to be good, it's always going to be impressive, but when we've got light happening in the foreground, no light in the background, we wanna be able to edit that photo a bit and try and merge those together as well as we can. And Pro Raw is going to give us more flexibility in the edit. And we'll talk about editing at the end of this video. Have a look at this photo. This is better already. When I look at the two photos side by side, I go, the second one that we've done is better. Just with the, the, the stockyards a little bit higher in the air. There's no plane, but we can get rid of the plane, the other one, that's no big deal. I like this a lot better. Tell you what, <laughs> it's starting to cool down a little bit. It's still summer here, if you can believe it. This is the beginning of the season. The seasons, uh, what I'm talking about the seasons, I'm talking about that galactic core, that Milky Way, those orange, that orange gaseous cloud that you see in the sky here. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's starting right now, and it's February, 
February, February, I don't know, it's the beginning of middle of February, I don't know what bloody date is, it's, it's February anyway, and the moon phase has just finished, so there's a new moon starting in the next couple of days, the sky is dark as dark can be. So this is happening right now, this will go through for us in the southern hemisphere to about November, October, November, and it will be in the other side of the sky um, at different times of the night through the year. So I've got another video about planning where, to, where, where that line of stars will be. I'll link it down well, up there or wherever it is. So you help you where you are work out where that is. That makes sense? I think so. As we look at this photo now, and I do this, I do this every time that we take these sorts of photos. I go, that's cool. What can I do to make it better? And in this case here, we'll have a look and we go, what is missing from this photo? What could we add in that's not already there? Now, I really like the composition. The tree, I don't think adds anything to it, but I also don't think it takes anything from it. It'd be better if it wasn't there, but well, it's, it's there and I can't change that. I like where the galactic core comes into um, those stockyards there. So I'm, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm not gonna move the camera is what I mean. I'm not gonna chop the tree down. But what I do notice is over on the right hand side between the stockyards and the tree, you've got this big black area there. And I think that detracts from the photo a little bit. So we're gonna take exactly the same photo. I'm gonna use one of these um, light panels. This one here that I used to light the vehicle up just then. You can see what that is there. It's just this little LED panel, very small little thing. And you don't need a lot of light to do this. And I'm going to go to that side as the photo is being taken and we'll just shine that torch for about that amount of time. <laughs> okay, that looks a lot better, I think. The foreground is lit up evenly across the across the way there. I don't like how it goes right to the edges, but we can fix that up in the edit. And I'm quite happy with that. We've got this dark band that goes through the middle of the photo. That's just the, the middle ground way out in the distance there. I can't do anything about that. Anyway, let's have a look at the edit on this photo. Now, because we shot in Pro Raw, we need to edit these photos. You can't just share a Pro Raw photo on social media. You can't just print a Pro Raw photo. It's going to render it down and it's going to look pretty bad. So we'll shoot Pro Raw, we'll edit the Pro Raw, and we'll end up with a ripper photo. I use Adobe Lightroom to do all of my editing. This here is Adobe Lightroom. There's a few things that we can do with this that's dead set easy. One, you can just use a preset. You can go over there to shamemosson.com. I've got a heap of presets there for astrophotography. They're like five bucks for a pack. Cheap as, helps the channel, so support me if you can. Let's have a look at the edit just in this as it is here right now. With Adobe um, Lightroom, you can go to these two little circles here. And these are um, presets that it's going to recommend to you for the photo. Sometimes these are good, sometimes they're not so good. We'll click across the way here. Don't like how these are happening. Don't like any of those really. It's not too bad, it's adding a fair bit of grain. The second one there is probably the better one of all of them. You don't have to do these. You can do these all from, um, from the start. In fact, we're gonna hit the cross there and we're not gonna bother with any of them at all. We'll go to the light tab and we're gonna increase the exposure just a little bit increase the contrast a little bit when you're editing this stuff little is a lot don't do too much to these photos they'll end up looking like they've come out of disney pixar studios and what i do like to do is when i'm thinking to myself my thought process around editing these as i hit a slider and i go is that going to do much with this photo because these don't edit quite like a regular big boy camera they edit a little bit different so i'll try a slider and i'll move it to extremes first like let's go the black slider and move it to the extremes you can see what sort of impact it's going to have on the photo um, and like i said less is more so we'll go just to there with the blacks over to the color because we've shot raw we can change the white balance of this photo um, it's a little bit cool so we'll bring that temperature down a little bit and i'm going to bring that i normally go Actually, I'm still going to go a little bit magenta. Just a little bit. That's all for that. We'll keep going across. We've got the blur. We don't want to do anything with blur. Into the effects tab here. With iPhones and iPhones especially, we have a bit of an issue where we have a lot of haze in the photo. And we're going to use that dehazing slider. This is my favorite thing or one of my favorite things about Adobe Lightroom on the mobile phone. If we bring that dehazing slider up, see what it does to that core? to the sky 
that's pretty darn good that's all for that now i'm going to go down the bottom there to the right just a little bit and you've got that circle that's the mask you hit the plus on that and select sky this program is awesome for doing this it's going to go through find where the sky is in this photo just like that and we can change things in the sky and the thing that we want to change with this is the clarity i'm going to increase the clarity just a little bit i like that go to the details tab go to noise increase that noise and hit the tick button down the bottom there now to see what we've done and what we'll, what we've achieved with this we can just touch on the screen and you can see the before and after what we want to do there i like how that's coming up i'm going to decrease the whites a little bit and see what that does on the light go to whites and decrease that a little bit it is working the way i was hoping it was going to work i'm happy with that do you remember when I said with the lighting here, um, I don't like how the foreground's all lit? Well, we can change that here. We can go with the plus, uh, sorry, the, the, the masking, hit the plus. And what we're looking for here is a linear gradient. Well, we can just use a brush, actually. A brush will work just fine. And I'm just going to brush in the sides there, just in the corners, just like that. That's about it. Go to the light and you know, drop the exposure just a little bit in the corners. I like to do this because I don't like the, the light going all the way to the corners at the front there. You can still see it, it's just not as bright. I think that, when I hit the tick on that, if I hit this screen to go before and after, this is a pretty rough and ready one done straight out of the phone right here on the side of the road. Literally on the side of the road, there's a car coming past right now. I think the edit on this is quite good. Anyway, what do you think about the edit? What do you think about the photo? Can you do it where you are? Let me know. That's all for today. I'll catch you later.